In the 130-year history of the program, Ohio State has beaten Alabama, Oklahoma, USC, the team up north, and nearly every other major program in college football. Nearly. Still haven't beaten Clemson. I blame Woody Hayes. Coach Hayes, it's not like he was calling offense at the 2016 Fiesta Bowl, but to be fair, it's not like Tim Beck or Ed Warner were either. But like most sports fans, Buckeye Nation can be a superstitious bunch, and it's hard for me to not reflect upon the fact that Ohio State's troubles with Clemson began the moment that the career of its greatest coach ended. If you're new to the story of Woody Hayes, the one thing you should understand is that he was a man of contradictions. In one moment, he would be loving and paternal, the next violent and spiteful. As he became older, his temper shortened and his outbursts grew. In fact, after the 1977 season, Ohio State Athletic Director Hugh Hindman warned Woody that he was on thin ice after assaulting a camera operator during the game in Ann Arbor. One reason the players loved him so much is because they knew that you know, he cared about him. You really liked playing for him, and you really appreciated him because you knew how much he cared about you. He cared about you on the field and he cared about you off the field. Everything that he did was out of caring. He did tough love, but it was always love. He was, he was more like a dad. So, you know, sometimes dads have to uh, show tough love to get their point across. It wasn't a feel-good season. You know, whenever you lose three regular season games in Ohio, like in Columbus, it's, it's just, it's not a successful season. And there was a lot of pressure on Woody to play hard. And that played heavily with that team. I mean, Rod, Rod Gerald was our incumbent. He was the guy that everybody depended on. And, and it messed up the, the rhythm of the team, in my opinion. We never really got in sync that year. We were just a very talented team, and we were able to overcome a lot of stuff. But when we were really challenged by a team that was as good as we were, we had issues. We played Penn State. We got beat 19 to nothing, I think, and Art threw five interceptions. That didn't start off good. Anytime a freshman comes in with so much hype and, and is handed the starting job, well, you better come in and perform and back it up, and, and that didn't happen. And it was really just a disaster that first game. We we had a hangover, I think, from the SMU game, and, and Purdue snuck up and beat us. So we strolled along, you know, the next few games. You know, I think we won four or five straight after that. And Michigan was just a disaster. I mean, it was just a disaster game. We couldn't do anything right, and it was just a terrible game. So then, you know, we go into Clemson, and that's, that's when it all kind of unraveled. <laughs> the 78 season had been difficult, which resulted in the Scarlet and Gray being invited to the 1978 Gator Bowl to face Clemson, a school Ohio State had never competed against. The matchup between Hayes and Clemson head coach Danny Ford could not have seemed more one-sided. While Woody had coached Ohio State for 28 seasons, racking up five national championships and 13 Big Ten titles, the Gator Bowl served as Ford's first game as head coach of the Clemson Tigers. The game was hard fought, with freshman quarterback Arch Schleister having his best game of the season, accounting for two touchdowns, throwing for over 200 yards, and going 16 for 20 in passing. Late in the fourth quarter, Clemson led by two points, and with just over two minutes left in the game, the Buckeye offense found itself facing third and five on the Clemson 24. Victory was just within reach. Schleister looks at Donnelly. Throws it short, it's intercepted. Charlie Foreman, the middle guard, intercepted it. Schleister looked into the middle of the short man and he threw it right in Foreman's hand. The first turnover by Ohio State. And we got a big fight going on. The officials buried in the middle. Oh, uh, come on now, quiet down, folks. 
I could tell the ball got intercepted and something happened on the sideline. I didn't know what. You know, I'd come walking down the sideline and ask what happened. And, you know, they said, well, you know, what do you punch somebody? And I'm like, okay, well, you know, what's the big deal? <laughs> I mean, he, he hit somebody every day. And uh, they said, no, he hit the guy on the other team. Well, the one he should have been hit is Art. I mean, he drove the interception to a nose tackle. And that was the winning drive, too. I do remember very vividly what, you know, Woody said to us, you know, after the game was over, you know, he'd, he'd get us up in a, in a huddle, you know, everybody'd circle around and he'd be in the middle. He said, everybody up here, everybody up here. He said, uh, you probably think I'm sorry I hit that guy, don't you? Don't you? We're like, yeah, maybe a little bit, Woody. <laughs> and he goes, do you know what? Do you know why? Do you know why? He goes, because the Heine bastard, he had it coming. He goes, because his great-great-grandfather killed my great-great-grandfather in the Civil War. And so, you know, that was his reasoning for hitting the guy from Clemson, because his great-great-grandfather killed his great-grandfather in the Civil War. I think after the game, he started calming down, and the reality is he started to sink in. And he, had, he, he knew he was in trouble. After the game, athletic director Hinman told Woody he had the choice to quit or be fired. Woody's response? That'd make it real easy for you if I quit, wouldn't it? You're going to have to go ahead and fire me. You know, it was a long flight back. Not much talking on the airplane. And then we land, and uh, Woody gets up. He said... Uh, I'm sorry to announce I'm no longer the head football coach at Ohio State University and hung up, hung up the, the mic and walked off the plane and everyone just kind of sat there in shock. You could hear a pin drop. Nobody said anything. There's no chatter. And we sat there for I don't know how long. It seemed like forever where we just sat on the plane. 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, I don't know how long it was, but some one person stood up and then we just all filed off the plane. Nobody said a word. He never, at any time, said that it was right what he did. Uh, he never tried to make excuses about it. He made a mistake. He, he manned up to it. He took his blows like a man, because that's who he was. He was a man's man. More than a generation had passed when the Buckeyes once again squared off against the Tigers, this time in the 2014 Orange Bowl. Both programs were on an upswing. Dabo Sweeney was in his fifth year as Clemson's head coach, while Urban Meyer was in his second at Ohio State. Over those two years, Urban's Buckeyes had lost only one game. Tonight would be their second. Led by quarterback Braxton Miller, the Buckeyes went back and forth with Clemson until the game once again ended on an interception during another attempt at a game-winning drive. Three seasons later, the teams were set to battle at the 2016 Fiesta Bowl during the semifinals of the college football playoffs. This game was, objectively, the worst in Urban's tenure at Ohio State. After three national championships, two SEC championships, and one Big Ten championship, Meyer was shut out for the first and only time in his career. The less said about this game, the better. Ohio State's not used to this, so I'm not used to this, and we will not get used to this. That won't, that's not gonna happen again. Which brings us finally to December of 2019. Once again, the Scarlet and Gray would find themselves in the college football playoffs, and once again, they would face the Tigers. With first-year head coach Ryan Day's supercharged offense, Ohio State dominated the first half until a series of questionable calls shifted the momentum to Clemson. Certainly were a lot of plays in that game that didn't go our way. In a game like this, where the margin for error is so tiny, uh, you know, one play can alter the game, and, you know, <laughs> it didn't seem like we got, you know, any of those plays. As if this rivalry was some kind of poem, the end of each stanza rhyming with the last. The game once again ended on an intercepted Ohio State pass as they attempted to drive for a game-winning touchdown.
I think it's important to note that uh, Rex Kern, Archie Griffin, and many of those who played under Woody Hayes for decades all noted that Woody had a long-standing issue with diabetes that he never really took care of to the degree that he should have. Many that played for him, including Mr. Washington, uh, suggested that Woody probably didn't take his insulin the day of the 78 Gator Bowl. Uh, that doesn't excuse the behavior, but hopefully it will help us understand why the event happened. And to all those Clemson fans who may be watching this, yes, my hat's off to you. You've had Ohio State's number for quite some time. But one of these days, Ryan Day is going to catch up with you because there's no such thing as a curse. Right? My name's Christian. I was born a Buckeye, and until next time, OH.